So where am I while I'm making this video? I am at the back of our cottage on Lake Muskoka, north of Toronto, two hours. And um, our property is mostly red oak, a little bit of scrub white oak, and red uh, white pine. Tiny bit of red pine, but I planted that. There's also cherry and a lot of sumac. And we have a lot of oaks, and the birds love the oaks. And that's why I'm out here trying to pick off these gypsy moth. Larvae, pupae, and egg masses. And the oaks, of course, have been here far longer than anyone put cottage or canoe on these shores. And uh, I love this, this little seedling growing right out of the moss. One of the less helpful things that many of the guides to controlling gypsy moth say, says is that um, you should clear your property of um, leaf litter and branches and all of that sort of thing. And I guess what they're thinking is that <laughs> you're in a typical backyard in suburbia, but a forest, of course, is not like that. And um, the purpose of a forest is to let nature do its thing. So we're not going to clear this. And that may uh, work against us in this control. So even Doug Tallamy says birds don't eat this guy. Though Doug Tallamy, of course, in Bringing Nature Home says that oaks are the very best plant you can grow in your garden because they bring in caterpillars and they bring in birds. And that completes the cycle of life. But this caterpillar from Europe is not eaten by our native birds. Here is the last larval stage of the gypsy moth caterpillar and it is on a red oak that we have had to wrap to protect from beavers. So if it's not one thing, it's the other. And here you see the pupae, which is the in-between stage between the caterpillar and the moth. And these things are now <clears throat> transitioning to be either male or female moths. And again, they're on a tree that we have protected from the beaver, which often comes up from that shore. This is not very pretty, so avert your eyes if you're a bit squeamish. And you also have to be quite far away from these guys because they're, they sometimes squish the lug right out at ya. Ah! Keeping in mind that each of these pupa has the potential to be 200 to 500 caterpillars eating these oaks in spring. Here you can see some of the pupae under oak leaves. So they're not always on um, bark or wood. They can actually um, pupate in the protection of one of the oak leaves near the bark. Needless to say, every uh, female moth that you find, um, either in the process of mating or just after mating, is um, the potential for two to five hundred caterpillars next spring. So it's important to get rid of the females.
there are multiple pupae and of course then moths on this tree. It has flaking bark, which is often quite typical of oaks. And this, this happens to be a white oak, a small white oak. But the flaking bark is a protection for them. This um, ridge that's on the back of our property faces north. So at first I thought there weren't going to be any uh, caterpillars. I hadn't found any on a lot of the trees that were very exposed, but here is a little protection. And um, when you find a tree with caterpillars, larvae, pupae, you often find many. So they have um, pheromones, obviously, but also an instinct for protection for the eggs. So what makes this such a difficult procedure is that you can see here that the female moth is well camouflaged behind this leaf, this red oak leaf, and there she has already laid her eggs. And on the neighboring trunk of this red oak, there are the pupae, which are really well camouflaged in the flaking oak trunk. So um, it's going to be a hard task to catch all of them. I mean, it's impossible, but at least I will be um, controlling some of them and that'll make a difference next spring. So here is a very popular gypsy moth hangout. There are 10 female gypsy moths tending egg masses on this tree on the white oak. I think I said before that they didn't go for white oaks on our property, but they most certainly do. And um, this has the potential, I guess, to be, according to the numbers, 5,000 gypsy moths. I can spray this egg mass without actually getting that close with this. homemade sprayer and my recipe for homemade horticultural oil. I'll have to come back and check on these later, but I'm pretty sure the combination of oil and soap is going to do it. And it's important to also um, look low down near the ground because here is an egg mass that's barely four inches above uh, the ground. And um, this is obviously a lazy caterpillar, lazy gypsy moth, um, but it's easy to miss these egg masses. Well, I'm not sure how long I've been spraying these egg masses on oaks, but I guess one of the more depressing um, moments is finding them on white pines as well because we have a lot of white pines and um, here's one on white pine on the, on the trunk and look at this here's another one wrapped around a branch you can see that I planted these little pine trees and you are not getting my little pine trees When we built on this property, it was necessary to do some rock blasting in order to get our foundation into the ground at a reasonable height so that we nestle down a little bit. And um, of course, this is Precambrian granite, the granitoid rocks, granitic rocks. Um, and being the stealthy little things they are, the gypsy moths have managed to find the blast hole in the rock and um, use our own devices for their own devices. And some of the egg masses are clearly too high and too dangerous to remove. So um, those ones will have to come back and try the stick approach.
You know, just when you think you're feeling a little optimistic that you've made some headway into this population explosion that's going to happen next spring, you look up maybe 25 feet, 30 feet up, and you see white female moths on top of their egg masses, totally out of reach. And so you just have to keep your fingers crossed that you've made some kind of dent in the population and maybe we'll have a really um, severe winter.